I'd like to call this regular board meeting of the Columbus Municipal School District December the 11th, 2017 to order. Uh, we do have a quorum present tonight. All members are present and we have our invocation offered by Ms. Curry Fisher followed by the pledge. You bow your heads, please. Father God, first of all, we just thank you. We thank you for your creations. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your holy word. And most of all, Heavenly Father, during this season, we thank you for the birth of your son, Christ Jesus. Father God, we just pray that you will bless us tonight, bless our considerations, bless our deliberations, and bless the decisions that are made on behalf of our students and our staff. In the name of your son, Christ Jesus, I pray that you will protect and bless everyone under the sound of my voice, as well as those that are not here because of what reason, we don't know. But we just pray your blessings of health and protection over them and their families. In the name of your son, Christ Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done. But, oh, my God, how we praise you for what you're about to do. Amen. 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 If you would, rise with me, please. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome and thank everyone for being here this evening. Uh, board, um, we do have our agenda before us, uh, just a couple of changes to it. Um, Mrs. Lenore, do we have uh, the student matter tonight? Okay. All right. So, uh, so the changes have been made, as you see, under item four. Uh, so we'll take that one item up here at the beginning of the meeting. So, board, uh, with tonight's agenda, I need a motion for approval. So moved. That's been motioned by Mr. Sparks. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Has been seconded by Dr. Shoemake. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Now we go to item 4A, um, which is uh, closed determination. Board, I need a motion for approval. I need a motion. So moved. Has been motioned by Mr. Sparks. All in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. We are going into closed determination. I'll be out shortly to uh, make our announcement. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for uh, returning. Uh, we did have uh, one student matter that the board uh, took up in executive session. Um, there was one action taken. Uh, it was a 5-0 vote, and uh, now we return to a regular session uh, with a 5-0 vote to move to our next item on the agenda, which is 4-D, consideration to approve uh, the minutes. Uh, board, I need a motion to approve. We'll take D, 1, 2, and 3 minutes all as one motion. I need a motion for approval. So moved. Has been motioned by Dr. Shoemake. Do I have a second? I'll make the second. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Now we go to item 4E, trustee travel and discussion. Um, one thing is that uh, several trustees, I think Dr. Verdell, myself, and Dr. Shoemake attended the Mississippi School Board Association meeting in Jackson. Uh, several breakout sessions in the fall uh, conference. Uh, very good information. Um, it's always good to... Uh, get a refresher on some topics and, of course, learn more about uh, things that we can do to strengthen this district. Um, are there any other trustees that might want to uh, comment any further on any of the topics that we discussed? Uh, yeah, just a second what you were saying. Um, I found it very, very helpful to go over things. I'm still you know, working to understand more about finances, and there was a really good session. I don't know if um, you or Dr. Verdell attended, but it was quite good, which I really enjoyed. And the other session that I found particularly interesting was uh, one given by a, I, the name escapes me right now, but the lady who has been in, taught in the school district, she's taught every grade but eighth grade, and she's been there for over 20 years and um, did a very, very good job on looking at uh, board leadership. So. Dr. Henderson. Yes, Dr. Henderson, that's right. 
Yes, Dr. Burdell. Sure. Um, the sessions that I went to were interesting as well. I think that the first thing that I, that I heard that morning by the keynote speaker um, was talking about how school boards have changed over the years, that this is no longer your school board from the 80s or the 90s, uh, that school boards have to adapt to change. They have to be really good at communicating with their superintendent. Uh, he also talked about that it's unfortunate in this country that we have people who join school boards for um, reasons that aren't good for kids. Um, he pointed out that, mem that people join school boards because they have agendas that are other than for educational purposes for children. And then he talked about um, people joining school boards for political aspirations, using that as a jump start into their political careers. And I thought that was really interesting for him to note that in an open keynote um, session. The other thing that stood out to me was um, the session taught by the, RE, the RCU unit from Mississippi State University on um, college and career readiness, talking about STEM disciplines and how students are having to be um, challenged more to be able to think critically, to be able to solve problems, and not simply focus on memorization. How in the state of Mississippi, uh, we have an unmet need for STEM jobs, that only 53% of people in the state of Mississippi are employed. And we have a 22% poverty rate, which is um, positioning the state not to do really well in terms of employing students in STEM jobs. So that was good information for me. It just kind of drove home some of the things that I've already known, but I, I thought that I, there were some pretty good takeaways from the training. Yes, it was. Thank you very much for You're sharing welcome. that, both of you. Um, and I, I, you know, as we've talked about, it's very good to uh, get that information and come back and share it with the board as well as the public here as well. And thank you for that. Um, board, now we go to um, our next item, which is 4F, uh, discussion and consideration to approve, um, for, let's see, board review of travel card statements for school year 2007, 17, and 2018. Um, actually in discussion um, uh, with a uh, business manager, that, uh, Mil I think Mr. Burt is his name, um, from Hines County School District. Um, and just uh, hearing some of his talk and different things um, as to policy as well as uh, oversight and fiduciary responsibility, uh, things that we're all um, knowledgeable about and mindful of, um, that, you know, it would be incumbent upon us to make sure that we are um, looking over um, all the aspects of expenditures throughout the school district. And I know we had discussion. I went back today. I took the time in between meetings to uh, watch the um, May the, May the uh, 2016 meeting when this was first addressed. And so I bring this back up just uh, because there are some things that I feel as a school board that we should uh, be evaluating with respect to um, those different uh, cards and the uh, accounts as they are brought to us. And so uh, that is why I brought this back up for uh, discussion and consideration. Uh, it's just so that as a board we can continue to have the oversight needed to make certain that um, we are doing our, um, our absolute best as fiduciaries of this district. So uh, board, is there any other discussion or question regarding uh, this item on tonight's agenda? I'm, I'm sorry, I think I missed the, the point of the, the item. What, what was the point? Sure, okay. Well, there's a few th different things that we have to consider. And uh, one is that as a board, uh, we're responsible for all expenditures or of district funds. Um, several different times, um, there have been charges, because if you look at the docket, it shows up as card services, and it lines out expenses being paid for those different, uh, those different um, that specific cards. And so when you go through that in month after month and you're being told there are, there's no travel, but yet we're paying thousands of dollars a month in travel costs on the cards, I think that it merits looking a little bit deeper as to understanding why, because if you go back and watch the May 2016 meeting, you'll be able to see uh, what this use was going to be for. And so it's not something as to um, identifying or, or saying there's anything uh, improper going on. As much as it is about as trustees, we have the responsibility of making certain 
um, that we are doing our due diligence with respect to the item. And so that's why it's been brought back up. Okay, so do we have a, a report that's laying out what it, what it is that we need to look at or if, what the discrepancies are? Um, or are you just simply saying that this is something we need to be alerted of going forward? No, I, I, it's pretty clear as far as looking at the uh, statements for this particular school year um, just to, because we are in this school year, and then of course determine if we need to go back to the beginning of it um, as far as additional evaluation of it. Uh, so as far as information uh, with respect to the card, um, I think it would just merit that as a board uh, we take additional due diligence to uh, evaluate. Okay. So not having a travel card or going to a different provider? No, it's not changing anything with the system itself. It's just as a board, um, we were um, pretty much barred is the best way to say it, from actually seeing statements of um, the travel card itself, and yet um, some of the information being provided to the board does not match up with what's coming across to be paid each month. And so that's why I am asking that we take the extra step of just looking at it, not to say there's anything wrong or improper that has, has occurred, but I just feel that as a board, we need to take that additional step to, of evaluation with respect to the situation. So you're asking the board to let's do that, or are you asking Ms. Holmes to provide us with the report or well, an the, analysis each month? Well, the item that's on here tonight is to be able to upload into resources uh, the statements for those particular cards for this year, for this school year which would go back to July 1st or whatever the time. I don't know how the breaks in the reporting period are, but the first one that would have been paid on the docket for this school year and then everyone up to this point now. And that can be loaded into resources. It's not public, um, just as we do other type of travel and things that we evaluate so, so that the board would be able to do that. And then on every month going forward, still have that same system in place. Okay. Question? Yes, Ms. Fisher. Um, two things. Mm -hmm. What policy is this referring to that we need to um, consider approving the review? Well, it's policy DJ. Let me go up here and I'll pull it up here. Because at this particular point, we're not changing the policy. What we're changing or what we're doing is being able to review the statements up to this point. And and let's see. So while you're looking for that, Mrs. Spears, um, Ms. Holmes, have you found any discrepancies in the travel? Mr. President, yes. members of the Board of Trustees, in my monthly review of the, finance, of the actual travel card statement, mm -hmm. I review them for to make sure that the receipts match the charges that we've received for UMB, UMB Bank. So I verify the charges and the receipts match uh, accordingly and that they are properly charged expenses that we can be, that the card could be utilized for. That's the scope of the review that we do each month. So, okay, so then the receipts match the statements from the bank, and I'm assuming that the statements match whatever the request for travel was, because I just want to make sure we don't leave here and have people thinking that there is some grave issue with the purchasing card and travel. I, I don't want to leave here with that. Right, and that's what I'm trying out. to be very deliberate in my explanation of it is that there isn't anything that's being alluded to as being improper as much as it is about this board is responsible for doing its oversight and due diligence with respect to those same similar situations. Um, and so as we get reports every month, and I ask the question, or is there any travel report for any of us, then when we're, so, we're told repeatedly no, but then the charges show up on the statements 
A doesn't match to A and B doesn't match to B. And so therefore, as, as trustees, we are responsible for making sure that we at least go an additional level of evaluation, and that's what I'm asking for in this motion. And so the policy that was asked about is uh, DJDBA. And so we're not in this, at this particular point trying to change the policy because it stipulates certain things in it as much as we are evaluating the statements to see if we need to bring that up for discussion uh, at a future time. Mr. President. Yes. For the sake of uh, the Secretary and myself and also uh, Ms. Velma, do we have a motion? You, you said this motion, and I just want to make sure I've got the motion. motion. No, sir. We don't have a motion yet. Okay. We were just in the discussion okay. part of this for okay. any consideration. Okay. Good. Thank you. Sure. And so the policy referenced is DJDBA, which is direct for travel cards in our policies. I'm sorry. Did you say C as in cat? Uh, D is in delta. DJ. Uh huh. Delta, Julio, Delta, Bravo, Alpha. DJ, DBA. And so, board, uh, is there any other questions or discussion regarding this item? I do. I have. Um I'm, I'm sorry, I'm unable to find that policy right now. But I just want to uh, clarify mm -hmm. what within the policy are we following or not following? Are we within the policy regarding um, reviewing sure. the travel card statements? Is that our policy? Okay. In, in the meeting in May, 2000, May the 9th, 2016, there were two policies presented. One was to, uh, I believe, A option was to um, approve the travel cards and the stipulations go along with it and the trustees not have any oversight with respect to reviewing the statement. And the second option was the same language with the exception of that the trustees would have a responsibility and right to look over the uh, statements as they were received. And so that is the policy that it was voted through was the A option to where at this particular point the trustees would kind of be blind to the statements themselves. And so the only reason that it's being brought back up for discussion and not to allude to anything that would seem out of order or improper is the fact is that we're being told that the cards are being used for one thing and then yet we're being told they're not being used because there's no travel yet there's charges that repeatedly come through every single month. And so that's all I'm asking is that we be able to evaluate as the trustees the statements that are before that we have received from the beginning of the school year to see they align with what we were reported travel to have occurred. And so A to A, B to B, C to C line mm -hmm. up and there will be no other reason to, you know, consider the DJ DJ uh, DBA policy is for any modifications and so that's why I'm asking and have put it on tonight's agenda uh, for discussion is that uh, we be able to review <clears throat> the statements to make sure that A's line up with B's and B's line up with B's. And, and I understand that and I don't mean to beat this subject however I do want a clarification. You mentioned that there were two uh, policies that were proposed mm -hmm. uh, for consideration. One for consideration of approval one policy was approved, is that correct? There was version one of the same, of DJ DBA, there was version one and version two. Mm -hmm. And version one was approved. Yeah, so one policy was approved, one correct. option, version yes, one. Correct. Are we following that policy? We have up until this point, yes. No, let me finish. Are we following that policy with the recommendation for discussion and consideration to approve what is being requested and for F, or does this refer to something that could have happened in the policy that was not approved? Okay, so we have followed the policy mm -hmm. all the way up to this point and are still following the policy, mm -hmm. and the policy does not change based off of this item. This item deals with the actual statements, and so all I'm asking, and I guess what I'm not understanding, is as trustees, we have the right to evaluate any information 
that is dealing with the school finances or any other things that are related to the to school district. So I just don't understand why we why we would not evaluate. I don't understand the reasoning behind saying let's not look at them. We we haven't taken a vote on that. So no, I agree. And no, so, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just sure. an insinuation. We haven't taken a vote on that, sure. so you don't know who is right. <laughs> against it or for right. it. What I'm saying is, are we following the letter and the intent, if you want to go there, of policy DG, DJ. Um, DJ, DBA, which was approved, and not going down another corner of a policy that was um, that someone wanted to approve, but it was not approved right. by the majority of the board. That's all I'm saying. Right. It's, it's governance okay. by policy, sure. and, and I'm asking sure. if that's what we're doing. We're yes, we are sticking with the policy. That is correct. Okay. But I, I, we can ask yes, Mr. Yes. Dunn, our board attorney, with respect to the item that is on here tonight, if the board has the right to look at things. But. Uh, Mr. President, trustees, um, m my understanding is when a card is used, whether it be by the superintendent or by you individuals. And that card, uh, the, the statement for that is presented. It becomes part of uh, your responsibility to pay it or not pay it. And so whatever's on the pay docket, you, you have an obligation at any time you can ask for more data, backup. You can, I'm sure you go through the pay docket and look at it. And so you're responsible for that. So I don't think you have to have a specific policy that says you have the right to, to do this. If it's not being provided to you and you have a question, I think that it hasn't been provided. So I don't see any problem at all with this board acting now through a motion and a second to have this data presented as a resource. I don't think you have to have a specific policy. You are under obligation. That's your job. So if you've got a question, I don't see any problem whatsoever with there being an order of this board to ask for this information for that period of time, even though nobody at this point believes anything was done wrong. It's just to make sure that you haven't paid something that you shouldn't have paid, and you would be personally, could be personally liable for that. So, Mr. Dunn, at this point, if there's a policy that has been driving our, our um, behavior or protocol up to this point, and if we're going to go against that policy, wouldn't we then need to either lay aside the policy or, or vote to change the policy or just say we're not going to act in accordance to that policy? I, I don't think that if this board tonight acts to ask for this information that it's going to be contrary to this policy. Now, I didn't review this policy before the meeting, but I don't see anything in this policy that says you can or can't review. It just, it, the only thing it says is the district won't be liable for certain things, you know, misspent monies and things. But, you know, I just think it's an inherent power that this board and duty that this board has to look over things and if there's an issue that has arisen and that this information hadn't been provided in the past I think the board should act to ask for the information it probably is nothing to it but I don't think the board needs to change this policy because it doesn't have anything to do with your oversight yeah. well, and, and that's very true by the same token individually as board trustees we have the right to question any item that is presented for um, payment um, and that's a part of our uh, responsibilities in terms of being fiscally responsible so I'm, I, I have a question as to has any concern been brought to the business manager or the superintendent that needs to be addressed that is driving this request. I just want to know before we consider this vote. Well, the answer to that question would be no, in the sense is that we have information that we ask every month as far as reports. We ask every month, is there travel being taken? No. Is there travel being taken? No. Is there travel being taken? No. And yet, 
every single time the card shows up with travel cost on it. And when I went back and reviewed the whole meeting and I reviewed May the 9th, it says specifically in there from our business manager, from running the meeting, from everything as to how it would be used and what it was about and everything. You're welcome to go watch it on our YouTube channel. It's there. And the point is, is that it doesn't line up. And I'm not saying anything is happening. I don't want anyone to misconstrue that. I don't know how to explain it any differently. But when we ask for travel, and yet the travel card is being used, but there's no travel being reported to the board, and I resign off on the travel leave forms and different things, and I've asked from day one that they be uploaded into resources for the board to review, not just to me to know, the board to review. And that's all I'm saying is that I feel that it would be worth us just going that extra level of evaluation just to make certain that we're doing our due diligence. And so that's why mm -hmm. I've made, put this on here as us to look at it and be able to okay. uh, make that determination. Okay. One last uh, comment. We're, we're being asked to approve um, the board review on things that have happened, whatever transactions, since May 9th of last year, no, this year. No, ma'am. It's just for July the 1st of 2016 uh, through the current time this year, or this school year, excuse me, July 1st of this year. Yeah, and then, of course, going forward, which would go through the rest of this school year, which is through okay. June 30th of 18th. And this would involve um, items that we have approved on the docket mm -hmm. uh, that have been voted to be paid. That's correct. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. So, board, um, is there any uh, discussion regarding the item uh, 4F? Um, I need a motion for consideration to approve the item 4F. Pardon? I second. Okay. I, 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 could I have some specificity? Okay. Right. Because that's just. Okay. It's we just kind of wide open. The, um, thank you. The motion, if I understand correctly, is the way it's listed here, is a motion to approve the travel card statements for school year 2017-18 uh, to be uploaded, well, for okay. us, for the board to be able to review, and those would be uploaded into resources. No, that's, I'm sorry, that's not what. That's not your motion? No, that's not my motion. Okay. My, no, my motion is what is listed on the agenda, which is to approve board review of travel card statements. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. It, it does not uh, specify uploading to okay. board book. Okay. It can be a review in the office, or it can be a review that they give us the documentation. But whatever method. Okay. Um, the business manager and the superintendent agree on is what we'll do, but that's all that I'm, I'm making a motion for. Okay. I don't, I mean. We, I you're, don't, you're saying upload to board book. To resources. Like we no, do that, is, that is not what this says. I'm approving this motion. I'm, I'm making a motion to approve item 4F. Okay. All right. So that is your motion, Ms. Fisher. Uh, Dr. Verdell, you made the second. Any discussion? Okay. Yes, I do have a question here because I'm a little confused. Ms. Fisher, your motion, your motion is as for Elf reads, discussion and consideration to approve board review of travel card statements for 2017-2018, um, correct? That's the motion that's on the floor. The motion on the floor okay. is as to it is approve written, as it is the written, review. It's to approve it. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Now, Mr. Spears, what you were saying about the resources and things, that's something we already have access to. Correct. Yeah. So it would be redundant to bring it up in another motion. And if we just go ahead and, and move on, act on what you're motioning, we would already have everything right. where it's supposed to be. No, you would have to rescind my motion because it has already been seconded. And then you would have to make another motion. Oh, no, 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 this is what I'm saying. What you're saying mm -hmm. and what he's saying, two different entities, Mm -hmm. he, we already have it in resources. So if we go ahead and, and approve what you're motioning, we'll have everything that we need, which, was, which is basically the discussion and consideration to approve, which is your motion. The review. Which we already have access to the statements mm -hmm. via the resources. Right. So everything will wash out. Okay. Yes. 
So we have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? All in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Now we move to the next item on the agenda, which is 4G, uh, discussion of one-time funding uh, requests made to the board during the November the 18, 2016 special call meeting. Uh, we have the original document for the instructional needs that were presented to the board um, that's listed there that we've had time to review. And then we also have an accounting of the $642,000 fund balance spends at 12-8-2017. Uh, uh, they were board approved on 11-18-2016. Um, so <clears throat> with this information uh, being here and um, superintendent's not with us this evening, um, I guess the question would be to um, Ms. Holmes uh, with respect to um, the accounting. Was that a report that was pulled out of our software? I mean, that, that's here listed because there's some questions with respect to some of the savings. Yes, sir. Mr. President, members of the Board of Trustees, what you have is a, what, what I would call a summary page of all of the projects listed with the projected cost and the actual spends um, detailing the actual savings and possible overages, which were none. And then the following pages behind that summary report is the actual reports from the systems that tie to the spends that you see on the summary page. Okay. Uh, board, is there any questions? A um, couple questions I have with respect to uh, some of the items listed here. I mean, certainly um, several of them with respect to, say, the repair replacement of the outdoor patio at Franklin. Uh, that is a one-time expenditure. Um, and of course, the upgrades to Smart Lab and of course, purchase of technology. Uh, at this particular point, we would say it was a one-time expenditure, even though I know technology has a shelf life that at times we would have to intervene and purchase new ones. But uh, with respect to uh, some of the requests that were made as far as uh, interventionalists, uh, being uh, able to help our students grow at different sites uh, throughout different uh, elementary schools and middle school and high school. Uh, tutoring, um, I know, was a big part of the request. Saturday University um, being a big part of it, and I do see that um, those dollars were uh, put into place and used, uh, and there were additional dollars that were not spent. Uh, one in particular, uh, if you look at under F, that's listed under project, uh, it has uh, consulting services for Saturday University. Uh, $20,000 was the total amount, and none of it was spent. Uh, but I, was that just a... Yes, sir. Mr. Spears, if you would note, um, there, I do have a notation about that. Mm -hmm. um, there are three items on the summary report that are uh, highlighted with three asterisks those spins were collapsed in the very top project um, because there were so many multiple vendors um, and they all got charged the same line, just ran one total line and didn't break it out by, by projects on this report. So any of those spins for item, the consulting services for Saturday University, for the um, college and career readiness prep mm -hmm. and interventions that all got collapsed in project A for this report. Okay, so break that down just a little bit deeper. We had Saturday Academy. Yes, sir. Okay, and it was reported on uh, to us when it was presented that we were going to be using MDE's platform or services for uh, the different instruction that they received professional development. Yes, sir. Uh, what was the cost of doing it each month? The or I, I think it's four hours a day on Saturdays. It's the time frame in so many days, Saturdays over that period. The total cost, expected cost for that project um, for the Saturday University for the um, consulting part of the services would have been, um, let's see, let me go back to, that would have been included in Project F, and that would have been a total up to eight, eight four-hour sessions that would have been offered um, or paid for for those consultants. Again, I can give you the breakdown for that particular line. I would just have to go back and pull the invoices sure. to tell you. But any of those spins, all of those spins for the Saturday University for the interventions 
all of those were being reported out of the same expenditure budget line. So I didn't run the details behind it to say this intervention has cost this much or whether the Saturday University consultant cost sure. that much. But I can definitely pull that data together. But it's all being reported as that $182,000 spent that you see on the, in Project A. And, it's, and as far as, I guess you would say, participation from the different schools. Yes, sir. Was it equal across the different schools? Were there more that were from one school over another school? I would have to defer that question to okay. maybe Ms. Well, that's Lenore. fine. I mean, we can look into it as we yes, go sir. forward. And um, the last question I have is, I mean, I know this was brought to the board after we'd completed the budget last, uh, the last cycle, and that was in November. And so we entertained and, and, it, was, and it was passed. Um, were they, were these needs met in this past budget? Were they part of this past budget for the intervention uh, and all the services that we needed at that November meeting to help move our students forward? Were they in the last budget that we just finished up? Yes, this so that year? cost was included in the okay. last year's budget. There was only one spend that rolled over due to the timing, and that was the $7,000 for the equipment purchase um, at the high school for the Smart Lab. Okay. Okay, now I understand as far That's as the similar. purchases through this program, but as far as when the budget was assembled for this school year we're in, yes, all the needs that were not met by the previous budget were actually put into this year's budget. So all the services, Saturday, Saturday um, Academy and all these different things that were needed are ongoing this school year. Not that I'm aware of. Any, any of the spends that were related to this board approved, mm -hmm. um, withdrawal from fund balance, they were met um, or encumbered in FY17. Right. That's my understanding. Okay. But as far as we installed this because we wanted to help our students achieve and grow and do the things they needed to do to move to the next level. Yes, sir. And that's why we spent the money or we were requested to spend the money that we did. Yes, sir. In addition to the budget we'd already assembled, but when we assembled the budget for this school year we're operating in, those same type of needs were not built into this year's budget? If you're talking about these specific items that were addressed last year this time? Programs, interventionalists, uh, teachers, uh, tutors, all the things that we were told we, we were going to need to continue to move the needle for the students in this district, and that's why we were asked to approve this $600,000 request when we rolled back around and we did our budget for this past year that we're operating under now, were those part of the budget? To continue, the, like the after school programs, yes, sir. Yes. Those sorts of things, yes, sir. But some of these items, as they, we've seen here, are just one-time expenditures right. that we did not budget for in FY18, such as the sure. repairs and that sort right. of thing. Right, right. No, I understand that, and yes, I guess sir. I just wanted to understand because the test bank, it would not just be a one-year purchase. It would be a recurring purchase every year. I'm not, I don't, so, I'm not aware of the test bank being a part of this year's budget. Yes, Dr. Fidel. Yeah, I was just going to say maybe it would be um, worthwhile if we make the request to ask for a status of the items to see what were one-time purchases, what are ongoing, so that we kind of know where we are instead of having to, to guess about it. And that way we can take an intelligent think, look yeah. at, the, at the whole list. I think that'd be a great idea. Thank you for that, Dr. Riddell. Okay. Mr. Sand, um, Mr. Sand, will you take that back, please? Thank you. Okay. Is there any other questions regarding this um, item before us? And if, yes. Ms. Just Fisher. one question regarding um, Franklin and the repair or, or replace of the outdoor patio. Is that, when, you, when it says here, the motivating factor is that the outdoor patio area is damaged and leaking, is that the canopy? Mm -hmm. Or, the and is that re, an item? How long is that item? Um, when was that foundation laid and when was that canopy added? Uh, it was the How canopy. I'm sorry, Ms. Fisher. It was the canopy on the outside as you enter into the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. That entire structure uh, for the outside canopy was replaced and painted. And since then, we have had some uh, some community volunteers come and replace and paint the uh, picnic tables in that area. So that area is uh, up to par to fit with the renovations that we did make on the inside of the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. 
and we did follow the guidelines of the um, Historical uh, Preservation Society to make sure we uh, were not out of line with our repairs. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for the comments on that, and then we'll talk about as we get into next year or to January's meeting about additional reports back. Thank you. <clears throat> next is uh, 4 H, which is the discussion of the upcoming school improvement meetings in Jackson uh, with Mississippi Department of Education for Columbus Middle School, Cook Elementary, and Franklin Academy. Uh, board, as I, I mentioned to you um, at our review session, uh, there's a meeting on December the 18th, Monday, December the 18th, three meetings. Uh, they will all uh, be addressing uh, the different uh, schools uh, within our district that have fallen into um, the F category uh, through the last round of testing that we had last school year. Uh, and of course, there's different uh, school activity re um, reports that we're going to continue to work with. Uh, the information that's been uploaded to resources with respect to the PowerPoint presentations that were submitted to MDE. Um, also, uh, re remedies that we're working toward right now uh, in addressing how uh, the schools uh, will be able to move from their current status and improve in performance and resources and things that uh, may be needed to address those same uh, issues. So, uh, board, I would you know encourage you to uh, take the time if you haven't already to go through, uh, review the PowerPoint presentation, also the additional information provided um, from the middle school, um, as well as. Uh, I don't believe there was the presentation that was provided to MDE last year, uh, but certainly review that information. And I would also ask that if you are able to do um, to attend the meetings, it is open to all the trustees as well as the management team and others that will be there uh, on uh, December the 18th uh, in Jackson at the MDE office. I have uh, not received yet the uh, formal uh, formalization of the times and the exact location, but as soon as I do receive it, then I'll be sure to send it to uh, Ms. Velma Woodard to uh, submit to the rest of the board so that you would know if you were able to make one or all the meetings. So is there any questions uh, regarding uh, this information item? Okay. Uh, now we move to uh, item um, 4I which is uh, the trustee travel for the December the 18th meeting of uh, I'll be traveling down uh, that morning and then traveling back that evening. So, uh, board, I need a motion for approval of uh, the travel expenses. So moved. Has been motioned by Dr. Verdell. Do I have a second? Second. Has been seconded by Dr. Shoemake. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Next, we go to 4J, uh, discussion of the January 3rd, 2017 board review meeting. Uh, that is right after the uh, start of the new year. Uh, I know there will be a lengthy period of time uh, coming up where school will be out and they'll be working to prepare uh, all the information, getting it to us. And um, no, certainly we can leave it as it is uh, and have our review meeting here on the 3rd. Um, or do we want to consider um, taking up and not having our review meeting on the 3rd and then just having our meeting on January the 8th. What is the will of the board? Um, I'd like to move that we not have the review meeting and simply have the January 8th meeting for okay. the month of January. Thank you, Dr. Verdell. Do I have a second? Second. That's been seconded by Dr. Shoemake. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Next, we go to our consent agenda. Uh, we have item 5A, which is the monthly policy review. We have GAEP. Then we go down and we have consideration uh, for approval, the policies to lay out to the January 8th regular meeting, uh, BBA and BBABA. And then we have also uh, C2C, which is rescind policy BBAA. Then we have our dates to remember academic dates, athletic dates, board meeting, uh, which as you'll notice, January the 3rd is listed there, but that will not happen, so we'll have that removed off the calendar. Now our January 8th meeting, then we have four, consideration to approve Columbus Middle School overnight field trip for uh, festival workshop competitions in Tupelo, February the 23rd, 24th, 2018. Then we have consideration to approve 2017-18 CHS revised basketball schedule. 
um, consideration to accept two donations from International Paper Foundation to Franklin Academy, consideration to accept Blue Cross Blue Shield of Mississippi grant for Franklin Academy in the amount of $257, and then consideration to accept donation in the amount of $900 to Columbus High School Christmas Classic uh, from Bancorp South, um, Nobles, Harrelson, Dentistry, Partnership, EcoRide, uh, Eco Graduate Services North. Uh, so, board, those are the items listed under our consent agenda. I need a motion for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. It's been motioned by Mr. Sparks. Do I have a second? I'll make the second. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Next, we come to open forum. Uh, we do have two uh, gentlemen signed up for open forum tonight. Uh, first, we have uh, Mr. James Parkinson. So, Mr. Parkinson, if you would come to the podium, please. And uh, welcome, and thank you very much for being here. And uh, again, I echo, I thank you so much for your talk at the high school the other day. Uh, it was very good. I enjoyed it greatly. Uh, Mr. President, uh, trustees, let me begin by saying uh, what an honor it is to be here, notwithstanding the fact that uh, I find the minutia and the detail and the remarkable attention you pay to your jobs, I'm in awe of that. And I'm grateful that there are people like you who will take time to look into these issues and pay such close attention to education for our children. Let me just give you a little background. I'm a retired um, <clears throat> trial attorney. I looked into education and I saw that we had a real problem in America. It isn't necessarily with school boards or with teachers or principals. It's on the other side of the equation. It's with the students and with the parents. Uh, I think for anybody to come in and find fault, like I read in the newspaper, about a, a school board and about what you're trying to do, I think it's, uh, it borders on the offensive. Uh, I think it's time that we as citizens, not on that side of the table, but on this side of the table, take a good look at ourselves and ask ourselves, are we preparing our children to come into a classroom prepared to learn? Have we done everything that we need to do to prepare our children to be curious and to understand the great opportunity they have to be in a classroom. So I wrote a little book. The title of it is Autodidactic Self-Taught, and I've, through um, uh, Mrs. Curry Fisher, you can get a copy of it, and I just talk about how I was able to succeed in education through vocabulary, reading, and writing, and how one day I just had to wake up and say, you know something, it isn't the board's responsibility to educate me. It isn't the teacher's. It's my responsibility. Uh, and I told the children that at Columbus High School. I came here 2,000 miles from California at my own expense. I donated my time. I got my friends to donate the book. And people say, why are you going to Mississippi? Well, I have a special place in my heart for Mississippi because my business partner, Wilbur Colomb, lives here. And I have other great friends that live here. And you might find this hard to believe, but I happen to be a member of the 100 black men of Columbus, Mississippi. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mr. Parkinson, you don't live in Columbus, Mississippi. <laughs> well, you're right, I don't. But I gave a talk to their protégés on education. And I turned to Marshall Irby and I said, I'd like to be a member. So I joined it and I got involved and I found out that you're 50th in the country in literacy. California, by the way, is 47th, not too much better. I read in the paper that we have 66% of our students in Mississippi that don't read at the grade level. Now, as you deal with all the issues you deal with, I'm not going to come in here and tell you how to do anything. I'm not capable of it. I'm not qualified to do it. But if I can go to a high school and talk and share with them my vision of taking personal responsibility, and I find one child in that group who 
the message resonates with, and that child raises himself up to be a board member of a school district, a teacher, Nelson Mandela, I've changed the world. I kind of feel like Johnny Appleseed. I'm not going to plant the, the rainforest in Brazil, but I'm going to plant a tree in Columbus, Mississippi. So I just like to, I, I, I told Mrs. Fisher earlier today, and by the way, I owe you a great debt of gratitude for helping me set up the program at Columbus. What a great group of children. Can I just share something with you? I think your president was there when I stood at the door. There were a thousand kids that came to that uh, presentation. I shook the hand of every single kid that came in that building. You want to know why? Because they matter. I told them that they individually matter, not in the collective, but in the individual. That no matter what is ahead of them, I don't care if your daddy only went to the second grade, I don't care if your mom is in jail, I care about you. But the only way you're going to do it is if you quit talking about, oh, it's their fault. Now, I don't want to preempt anybody. If someone wants to come in here and find fault with the Columbus Unified School District Board, well, let them do whatever they want to do. That isn't my role. I'm here to say, students, wake up. There's a great world out here. All you've got to do is reach for it. And I'm just going to share one story, and then I'll sit down. I apologize for taking so much time. Um, in the book, there's an interview with Hassan Jallo, who is the prosecutor for the Rwanda genocide case that was tried in Arusha, Tanzania. I met him, along with Wilbur Colomb, one of your local attorneys. And he invited me to go to his home in the Gambia in Africa. I don't even know if you know where that is. I didn't. It's the smallest country in Africa and the poorest. And so I went to his uh, home in Banjul, the capital. He invited me to go there to meet the president and the other dignitaries. And, and um, when I got there, he couldn't see me because his brother had died. He said, the, he's downriver in Bansang in mourning. Well, after I met the president and the chief justice and all the different people that are so important, I said, I've got to go see my friend Hassan. So I went all the way down the river. It took me eight hours to get to his village. And you don't know poverty. I know you think you do, but until you've been to Africa, to the poorest country, you haven't seen it. I get to his home village. And Hassan Jallo, who's the most important prosecutor in the entire world, is sitting in front of his house in Bansang. He and I sat on a couple of old beat-up chairs in front of his house that had a door with no door windows with no glass, and I said, Hassan, how is it possible that you came out of here and ended up being the most important prosecutor in the entire world? He said, oh, my brother Jim, he's a devout Muslim. He said, when I was a little boy, I read every single book in my father's house. Then I read every single book in my school, and then every single book in the library. I said, Hassan, I'm a trial lawyer. <laughs> you don't have electricity here 24 hours a day. How did you do it? He said, oh, that was easy. He said, we had a hurricane lamp with kerosene. I read by the light of the kerosene lamp. When we ran out of kerosene, I went outside and sat underneath a light on the street. And when they turned that out, I went down to the post office because they never turned that light off. I fell in love with your buddy, John. I said, John? Yeah. John Steinbeck, he's playing with me. <laughs> then he said, what really changed my life is I ran into Billy. And he looked at me with a twinkle in his eye and said, uh, William Shakespeare, Parky. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, when I got around time to take the test, he said, I, I aced him. Eight percent of the people in the Gambia could read and write when he took his test. He went on to Dar es Salaam, graduated top of his class, went to London, end up with the United Nations and became the most important prosecutor in the world. How'd he do it? And I share it with the kids. I said, he made the decision to do it himself. Now, I got something to tell you. I said, if you come to me after this meeting 
and you tell me your story that your mama's in jail or your daddy's a drug dealer or your dad went to the second grade, I'll cry with you because my daddy was a doctor. I'm kind of one of those liberal types from California. But I'll tell you what, if you really want to complain, I'll give you Hassan Jallo's private cell number. You call him up and tell him how rough you got it in Columbus, Mississippi. And tell him why you can't make it. So I'm going to sit down. Mrs. Fisher, thank you for letting me come. I loved your husband. God rest his soul. I'm in awe of what you do. I am so grateful that there are people like you and, and people who dedicate their lives to education that will take care of all these things so I can go out and just say to these kids, you matter. Grab a hold of it. When I was born in 1949, a black person couldn't walk down the main street of New Orleans where my daddy was going to medical school. My business partner, Will Cologne, was born in Ripley, Mississippi in 1949. He jumped in a swimming pool three times, got arrested. When we had our first business meeting in New York, I flew American Airlines. You know how he got there? In his private jet. So don't tell me you can't do it. Thank you for letting me come. Thank you very much for being here. Mr. Spears. And yes, Ms. Fisher. I, I should have introduced Mr. Um, Parkinson ahead of time, but I would like the audience to know that he did speak to our Columbus High School students on Friday. He has also spoken in West Point. Um, he will be speaking at West Lounge, or not should be. West Lounds on Tuesday. And um, in reference to contacting me regarding the book, um, I am very proud to try and finish out what my husband began with the 100 black men by making you available, well, you made yourself available, but, but, but by bringing you to this area, to Mississippi. Um, and so, yes, I am a contact person if you want information regarding how to uh, get the book. It is a very good book. And Mr. Parkinson, I want to thank you for your efforts to expand literacy, especially in Mississippi. Anywhere in the world it's important because I, don't, I truly believe that if you educate a person, you may stop a criminal from being born. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I know that you would not mention it, but the book is autodidactic. Uh, if you get a chance uh, to also read the book, uh, I very much enjoyed the talk uh, the other day, and it was very, very good to see the students so uh, engaged in it. And another uh, point is that at the conclusion of uh, Mr. Parkinson's talk, he challenged our students to uh, all write an essay, uh, and in doing that, that uh, there would be the top three chosen, and those three would receive um, awards for their effort and, of course, for their uh, submissions for first place, second place, and third place, a monetary uh, value of doing that. So I thank you too for, for going that extra step and in, in doing that for our students. Thank you. Um, now, um, thank you for sharing with that. And next uh, we have um, for open forum, Mr. Jim Wilson. Mr. Wilson, welcome. Mr. President and trustees, good evening. I'm Jim Wilson. I have been before you all before um, when we had a meeting on September the 25th, 2017. Uh, that meeting was a special call meeting to discuss special education. And um, in light of uh, some developments and things that have happened since then, I just wanted to make a brief statement because I sensed that you all had an interest in what we were discussing that night and that you wanted to be kept informed. So with that as a backdrop, with respect to the, the specific uh, situation that I was here about in September, um, I never heard anything regarding the situation from the school district and I felt like that I was out of options and so I filed a complaint with the Mississippi Department of Education alleging right. various violations of IDEA. Uh, Mr. Wilson, just, just one second. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but just one second. Uh, Mr. Don, with respect to that, this specific complaint, are we able to? I, he can say whatever he wants to okay. say about the complaint. Right. You can't say anything about it. Okay. He, he's willing to talk about it. I, okay. I don't see that that would be a pr 
prohibited. Okay. At all. I just wanted to check. Thank you. And I, and I don't you couldn't say things about specific employees, uh, students, and that sort of thing, but I don't see a problem. No, sir, I don't have any intention of okay. doing that. I just want to give you guys an update on okay. what was going on and sure. why I did what I did and some of the results of that. In any event, um, when I didn't hear back from anyone regarding an OT evaluation and a teacher's assistant for my son, I felt like I had exhausted my efforts in, in, uh, the, in my approach. And uh, I filed a complaint with the Mississippi Department of Education. And I did that on October the 6th. The Mississippi Department of Education investigators were here on November the 8th and the 9th to conduct their investigation of that complaint. On the afternoon of November the 9th, shortly after meeting with those investigators, the director of the special education department communicated with my son's classroom teacher and advised her to contact me and my son's mother to set up an IEP committee so that a committee could make a decision on whether my son was entitled to uh, a teacher's assistant and an OT evaluation. We did that. We had that meeting on November 17th. In the November 17th meeting, it was unanimously decided that my son would be entitled to a teacher's assistant and an OT evaluation. The teacher's assistant is a request that we have been making for two years, if not longer, and the OT evaluation, as far as I'm concerned, was agreed upon in May when we had our uh, IEP meeting for, for that school, beginning of that school year. Um, today is December the 11th. There have been uh, 24 days that have come and gone since we had an IEP meeting on November the 17th. I have not heard from the school district. I have no idea if anybody is working towards getting uh, a simple OT evaluation done for my son and I don't know if the uh, school is working towards hiring his teacher's assistant. My understanding from reviewing policy code GBCA under section G personnel of your policies is that when a position comes open that it has to be advertised on the website. I looked around, I, I couldn't find it. Uh, doesn't mean it's not there. There's a ton of information on the website. It's kind of difficult to navigate but I would hope that that position is being advertised in accordance with um, the, the board's policy. And in, in a litany of articles that were in the local newspaper yesterday, one thing that you said, President Spears, was that as a board, we often don't hear directly from teachers or staff or even parents. We hear what's brought to us, but I do think communication is something we need to work on. I'm here tonight so that all of you can hear directly from me to provide you with an update on the issues that um, I started discussing with you in September. Um, I would also like to provide you with, each of you with a copy of the state's findings from my son's complaint. And I respectfully request that each of you carefully, carefully review the findings, take them to heart, and please do something to ensure that we have the corrective action that our special needs students, not only my son, but others um, deserve. And uh, I have copies, if I may approach, I would ask that you give all give them to Mr. Copy. Don for review and then he'll give them to yeah. us. That's just the procedure that we have to adhere to, yes. That's all I have, President Spears. Thank you for your time. Thank you very okay. much. I was going to ask a question, but I think it's, that's okay. I was just going to ask, I was going to thank him first of all for coming yes. and for sharing, but then I was going to ask if by chance he was a member of the SPED, the parent, SPED Advisory Committee, because I, I think in our last meeting, we really solicited those parents who came mm -hmm. to join that committee. Um, right. So from a unified effort in conjunction with the district, those parents could have a voice to this board. And I just wanted to know if, if he had done that or if he was considering doing that or not. Well, I think that's something that we could reach out to or have Dr. Hickman or someone reach out to him and just ask because 
Um, I know that is something that we did certainly ask um, with respect to uh, the members on the committee, and I know it was we were told since there was a couple, one individual had passed away and another uh, that had left that committee that it was kind of still set, and so there wasn't any additions at that time. But um, certainly we could revisit that topic and just inquire as to how it's going to. I do see on the uh, website for the district uh, that there's an upcoming meeting, so um, so I guess I'll check great. and see and maybe even go to the meeting just that to see. I do have a question for Mrs. Lenore, and I, I apologize for putting you on the spot, but Mr. Wilson um, pointed out some things, and I was just wondering from a timing issue for the district, and I, I jotted down all of the dates and the, the times that he has, how much time does that typically take? I think he said he had his IEP meeting on November the 17th, and so here we are today with December the 11th. How long does it take for the OT evaluation and for setting up for an assistant teacher? Dr. Verdell, uh, President Spears, members of the board, I would prefer to get you a definite answer to that. I do know that information has been submitted for him to uh, receive the OT evaluation that has been requested. So I do know the special education department is in the process of working on having that evaluation done. And we are in the process of looking into the data and all of the other sources in regards to the teacher assistant. Do OT evaluations happen in-house or external? Normally they happen externally. Okay, thank you. So I, I hated that he couldn't stay to get that information because I was going to ask those questions. Um, but maybe we can, you can make sure that he gets that. Mr. Yes, Jones. yes, okay. I will uh, email um, that out um, to him. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, board, that carries us uh, to our next item on tonight's agenda, which is item seven, Office of Business Management. Um, we have our monthly financials, uh, which is under A1, that's seven A1, A, B, and C. 2, A2, A3, A4 um, for consideration to approve our financials. I need a motion for approval. So you're taking this through which items? I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, sure, this is item 7. Uh, we're under the Office of Business Management. We have our financial reports uh, to approve, and we uh -huh. have A1, which is monthly financial statement reports, fund balance, cash balance, and budget status report. Then two is monthly revenue budget report. Three is the monthly expenditure budget report. And four, certification and summary of reconciled bank statements. Um, and those are the four that we are to approve each month. So I need a motion for approval. So moved. Has been motioned by Dr. Verdell. I'll make the second. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Next, we go to uh, the monthly ad valorem tax collection analysis. Um, Ms. Holmes, would you like any, any comments regarding the tax collections? Because I know we're coming into the high collection point of the year. Mr. Spears, members of the Board of Trustees, um, I am happy to report that we are trending ahead of our collections for last year's. Um, tax, Avalorum tax collections that we received. We do anticipate um, a strong increase in our collections as we near the tax collection season um, starting. Actually, we expect to see a significant increase with this month's um, collections that we'll receive in January as far as the check goes. But, and you will note that we, will, we have received $174,000 of the 350 plus $350,000 approximately of the homestead exemption that we budgeted. So we, over half, we collected that, so. Okay, that's great. Um, one other question, because it's related to um, ad valorem taxes. Um, with respect to, I know there was a case pending um, and different things. Do we have any resolution to it at this point as far as any timelines as to when the dollars for those back taxes would be paid to the district? Have you had communication with? No Tax update assessor. from Mr. Andrews' office. Um, the last word that he heard, he's still waiting to get an update as well, but I will double back with him and confer with him again okay. about that. Thank you. Uh, board, do you have any other questions regarding the county tax uh, analysis, monthly app forum? Uh, next, we go to the athletic events report. 
<coughs> any questions regarding the athletic re events report? Um, then we go to our consideration to approve fixed asset disposal. Uh, board, I need a motion for approval. So moved. That's been motioned by Dr. Shoemake. Uh, do I have a second? I'll make the second. Any discussion? Uh, being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Next, we go to item number eight, uh, which is consideration to approve $5,000 transfer from Fund 1120 District Maintenance to uh, 70, Fund 7321, the CHS Student Clubs uh, for the Beta Club. Uh, we've had discussion regarding this over the last couple of months. Um, board, I need a motion for approval. So moved. Has been motioned by Mr. Sparks. Do I have a second? I'll make the second. I have a sure. discussion. Uh, it's so uh, did, been seconded by Dr. Verdell. Discussion. Yeah, did we um, figure out what happened? I mean, how to resolve it? How is it that the invoices were paid without the funds being there? Did we conclude what well, actually took place? Sure. Well, I, I know that um, there was information that when we discussed it at our, meet, our review meeting at Hunt, um, of information that the business office had gone back and put who, uh, for us to review on resources um, under board book. And um, as far as the dollars, there were dollars that were allocated in the, that year's budget for uh, the program Destination Imagination. And those dollars were to go to pay for, um, in that school year, to pay for the um, additional cost of the, of the beta club that didn't have enough money to finalize the cost. Now, as far as, okay, they didn't have the money and the board approved for them to take the trip but wasn't going to pay for the trip because they were doing fundraising activities, um, I think that's something that, um, you know, the business manager would be able to clear up a little bit more than just the information that's provided to us on the accounting side of it. But as far as reconciling it, uh, it was my understanding that uh, from what's been proposed to the board or has been discussed with the board is that um, there were funds that were going to be allocated. It just happened to be the timing in the break of the year from the closing out of June 30th to when um, we rolled into the next school year. And so those dollars are now being requested because they rolled over when the books were closed out June the 30th, 2017. And so the dollars are now being requested to reconcile that negative balance that was put forth. But I think your question speaks more to the heart of, okay, the club was allowed to go on a trip and other costs, mm -hmm. but yet they didn't raise enough money to cover it. Um, and that's a question that I still have as well. So, I mean, you know, that would be up to the business manager to be able to give us further clarification or Dr. Hickman or someone else. Yes, yeah, tonight, for instance, we just approved a trip by the Columbus Middle School overnight field trip to the One Act Festival in Tupelo. Mm -hmm. Now, the what it had on the form was that they would how they were going to pay for it was by fundraising. So that's parallel to what happened with the Beta Club, as I understand. Mm -hmm. And I guess. Is there, I don't know if there's a mechanism in place to prevent what obviously happened with the Beta Club, which was somehow we approved in principle their going contingent upon raising the funds. The funds were never raised, but they went. Right. And then we paid the bill. So we need to figure out what went wrong and not let that happen again. No, I, I concur with your idea on that. And the second thing I think is that it's, become problematic in the sense is that the fund 7321 uh, is a uh, fund for all clubs, not just the beta club, but all clubs in the district. And so while others are doing fundraising and putting money into that respective fund balance there, um, they may be raising fund to just offset the negative balance. And so they may have their own trip or their own dues or their other things that are coming up that are pretty much still left open-ended. And um, really what it comes down to is what the board is looking to do is we're plugging the hole because it's not just, yes, I mean, we approve for the Beta Club under certain contingencies to go uh, on the field trip that all things were in good order. But as far as the dollars there, we didn't allocate the dollars because we weren't asked to allocate the dollars, and that's not what we were intending to do. 
Uh, but at the same time, I guess it goes back to the point is to how do you prevent it from happening again and really what was the determining factor between they were allowed to go, was it okay everything was prepaid, well how did it get prepaid if we were coming through the district? And right, since we had our meeting at Hunt and, and then of course we came to the meeting here the Monday after that and we were told that uh, well we found money in the budget so we didn't have to bring it back to the board and then, then it shows back up this month for us to do what we were asked, we talked about doing at Hunt, which still I haven't gotten an answer to that question is either. Right, so I know that there's gonna have, would have been, I'm assuming, a purchase request, a purchase order for the expenses and that should have gone to the business office and the business office would have determined if the funds were available to make the payments. So that I guess that's my disconnect in seeing how how was the payment made if there were no funds allocated for that particular group. That's my question. Ms. Holmes. Ms. Verdell, uh, Dr. Verdell, um, Mr. Spears, members of the Board of Trustees, there was a determination made about the status of the funds. However, with respect, um, with Dr. Hickman not being here, I prefer that he would answer that question for you. I'm sorry. Not, not trying to be disrespectful, but I would respectfully decline that he would answer that question for you. Okay, so is it, is it the practice of the business office the practice of the business, pay? The pra no ma'am, the practice of the business office is that we will, we, it is our uh, responsibility and duty to determine if the funds are available. Right. And if the funds are available, we say that they are available. If the funds are not available, we make it clear that the funds are not available. And in this regard, there was a communication about the status of the funds for the Beta Club from the business office to management. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we're back to the same. I'm sorry, Mr. Spears. Can you clarify that to just make sure you're communicating clearly to the board about that communication? Because when you say management, that kind of, okay. I think they want a specific instance, please. Okay. <laughs> All right. So just in light of this, I, I believe that it would be best that we table this matter until January so that we can continue to get more information. So, um, now, I know there's. No, I was just going to ask, sure. do we have any outstanding invoices that vendors are waiting well, to be paid? But see, I have no idea. Or do we have any outstanding invoices, Ms. Holmes, that vendors are waiting to be paid? Regarding the Beta Club trip? Regarding this? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, for clarification, that communication, that uh, the termination about the status of the funds for the Beta Club was communicated to Dr. Hickman. Okay. And Mr. Spears, if you would allow me, I hope I'm not a, out of order, but I do want to clear up something that Dr. Shoemaker had a question about the trip that's on there tonight. Mm -hmm. That's what's been our practice with uh, the trips that we uh, bring before the board. Uh, funding sources identified for this particular trip for CMS, uh, that is the Drama Club, and they do have uh, adequate funds uh, in their account right now uh, to cover that trip if the funds is, are not raised. And we have an actual printout. Uh, from the business office, which uh, I have requested, and also have taken that to the Drama Club uh, uh, sponsor, uh, Mrs. Petty, that she has verified those funds, and also the bookkeeper and principal at the middle school, just to make sure all bases were covered to make sure those funds uh, were available uh, for the actual trip. And also for the Beta Club trip last year, uh, please note that it was communicated uh, with the business office manager and um, management above my head that uh, that that money was not available so to answer your question uh, how those checks were written is um, it's still a question that needs to be answered okay so I will withdraw my second uh, okay. to the motion and so we need a withdrawal of, of the motion if if person wishes to do I'll so. Resend. okay so that brings us so we've had a uh, motion and the second rescinded on um, item Yes, eight. Seven, eight. Yes, seven, seven eight. eight. Yeah, eight, eight. Um, for the transfer. And so I move and that we table uh, the item until the next uh, regularly scheduled meeting. 
to the January 8th, 2018 January 8th. meeting, okay? Um, that is a motion. Do I have a second to the motion? Second. Has been seconded by uh, Mr. Sparks. Uh, any additional discussion? All in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is, Ms. Fredell, did you? Okay, it is unanimous. Best. All right, next we go to uh, consideration, um, which is under 7A9, consideration to approve payment to the excellence group for two consultants for one day of professional development, November the 13th, 2017 at Cook Elementary for $2,600 to be paid out of federal funds. Um, to give a little bit of uh, understanding of this, I talked to Dr. Hickman when I had my review meeting with him. Uh, he mentioned that um, there was uh, a contract in place. We had a change in principle at the location and there was a miscommunication or understanding, misunderstanding about the purchase order that was that had been requested. Um, and so what had happened is that there was this under or belief that they were here for a certain period of days. The new uh, interim at the time believed it was a longer period and had allowed them to come back and they had sent two uh, people from the organization um, and I think the rate's about $1,300 a piece for the day is what Dr. Hickman has stated. And so uh, for them to do that, and so they have performed the, the work, and so we are responsible for paying them. And I believe they have taken actions to just make sure because of the changeover and the timing of it as to what caused the confusion, just to verify there would not be any other incidents that occurred with this changeover in leadership at the location. And so that's what's on here tonight is because we do owe them um, the dollars for the professional development rendered. So board. Um, I need a motion for approval. So moved. Has been motioned by Mr. Sparks. Do I have a second? Yes. Has been seconded by Ms. Fisher. Uh, any additional discussion? I do. I just yes, want to ask Fidel. Mr. Um, Shannon, uh, the federal funds, are the funds available and are the funds allowed to be used for this expense? Yes, ma'am, they are. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any additional questions or discussion? discussion. Yes, Ms. Fisher. Um, I am very concerned that we continue to have instances where services are authorized without the appropriate PO. And so I, I would like this board to, however we need to do it, make sure that our, um, our staff at all levels, understand that purchases prior to a PO being approved are not authorized. And I don't think this is going to work in the best interest of the school district if we continue to pay for um, charges that have not been approved. It's a bad business practice. Right. And, and no, and I agree with that. I, and, yeah. and, cer and certainly, um, I think that on this particular incident, and I understand we've had several different things that have occurred uh, over the last few months, but on this particular one, uh, from what Dr. Hickman stated, is that it was more along the lines of communication between one leader to the other leader, and of course, there should have still been this ongoing dialogue between, say, uh, the business office and then, of course, upper management mm -hmm. to have said, this is what this was for. and so. You know, I, I'm not making any type of excuse for it. I understand no, no, it happened, and, and, and you know, it's, it, but the whole point is, from my understanding, is that this w that it was properly requested, but it was just the misunderstanding between one leader at the site to the other as to at the time duration as to how, who would be there and how long. And and I'm not speaking. I'm taking the opportunity to speak. Oh, absolutely. This just happens to be the situation, sure. but it's a reoccurrence of this same kind of thing. And so what that says is that a process is not very well understood and is certainly not being totally followed. Right. And, and if, if we're going to do uh, due, due diligence on everything, which we should, mm -hmm. we should not be paying without someone answering to the board, paying for uh, services and there's no PO that has been approved to authorize those services, right. irregardless of sure. whatever the reason. And I do understand this situation. I do understand that there was a transition um, in, in uh, leadership uh, that caused some miscommunications and misunderstanding. But this board 
should check what we're doing because we're paying bills for something we have not, um, that has not been authorized and approved for PF. Uh, may I make a comment, Mr. Yes. President? Please. Mr. Dunn. <clears throat> you know, state law, I mean, you're, you're, in a sense, you're between the devil and the deep blue sea because if services are rendered or materials are purchased and, and the vendor didn't participate in the problem, the vendor provided it, you don't have a choice. You've got to pay it. Uh, there are Attorney General's opinions, you know, on that point saying you do. So the only thing you can do is make sure that the procedure is followed and, and calling people to account for that. But just so the public would know, I know you right. know that, um, but just so the public will know is if, the, if the services were rendered, which there's no question about the fact the services were rendered and they were valuable services and right. uh, the vendor was uh, not uh, involved well. in not, the PO not being issued, then you, you don't have a choice, it has to be paid. Right. Thank and, you. And Mr. Spears, yes. I mean, let me just also clarify. Um, this didn't just happen in 2017. It has been something that has happened again and again mm -hmm. for the last six years that I've been on the board. And what I'm saying is that we have to, to make sure that our responsibility is carried out. We can't continue to do this. It's wrong. And as Mr. Don said, if people give you a service, certainly you should pay for that service. But prior to getting that service, there has to be a PO to authorize it. Simple as that. Yes, Dr. Bidette. So, So there was a purchase order that was done by the previous principal. Yes. That's what I'm hearing. But the days, the number of days that the previous principal used was less than the days that the incoming interim principal was thinking were available. Yes. Okay. Uh, apparently, from my understanding, my discussion with Dr. Hickman is that it was authorized for five days. Is that or five and they thought it was six days or something and they sent two, is that correct? Um, it was one day less. It was uh, correct, one day less. The, the original purchase order was written for 6.5 days, 6.458 days. And two additional, one day with two consultants additional was worked outside of the 6.458 days that was written for the PO. Okay. And so that's what, you know, happened. But, you know, I agree, you know, we've had cleaners and other things that have popped up to the air that we've, we've been in the same situation. So, um, board, I, I need a motion for approval to uh, pay um, this item. Okay. Yes, we have discussion. Excuse me. Um, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Next, we go to item um, B, cl uh, claims docket number one. Uh, we have uh, just the one item. I need a motion to pay the bills. So moved. Has been motioned by Mr. Sparks. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Has been seconded by Dr. Verdell. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Then we go to item eight, which is the office of the superintendent. Um, school operations, superintendent travel uh, review, superintendent travel report. Um, I think he mentioned to us at the um, meeting the other day that he didn't have any travel to report. Um, I know he does have uh, one item coming up, um, or two items coming up here um, in, de in December um, that's on resources for the board to review. Uh, then we go to uh, consideration to approve 2018 uh, Columbus High School graduation facility use amended agreement with Mississippi State University Humphrey Coliseum for May 19, 2018 at 9.30 a.m. Board, need a motion for approval? So moved. Has, what is it? This is listed. I'm sorry. This date that we're about to approve, is that correct? What should the date be? What should the date be? The day should be May 19th, 2018, I believe. It is. Uh, it is. Did I read it off wrong? I'm sorry. No, you're, if you look at it, it's, uh, 8A2, second line, mm -hmm. is for Mississippi State University oh, Coliseum 4. Oh, you mean on the document? Yours, yours is incorrect. 
Okay. All right. So it is very good. <laughs> it is uh, 2018, 9:30 <laughs> a.m. So, um, so, uh, so, board, I need a motion for approval. I made the motion. Okay. Oh, motion is second. Second. Second by Dr. Shoemaker. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. No. Oh no. Okay. I abstain. I can't even vote because I'm okay. looking at a date of May nineteenth, twenty seventeen, that was printed out from okay. the agenda. And well, we okay. Okay. All right. So it's four in favor uh, and one abstention. Next, we go to item 8A3, which is consideration to accept $700,000 uh, 21st Century Community Learning Centers grant funding from Mississippi Department of Education to Columbus Middle School. So Order moved. Has been motioned by Dr. Verdell. Do I have a second? Second. Has been seconded by uh, Mr. Sparks. Any discussion? Uh, being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Um, next, we go to consideration to accept um, Mississippi Department of Education homeless grant. I need a motion for approval. So moved. Has been motioned by Dr. Shoemake. I'll make the second. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Next, we go to um, item five, which is consideration to approve notice of sale for CMSD surplus salvage buses. Board, I need a motion for approval. So moved. Has been motioned by Dr. Verdell. Do I have a second? Second. Has been seconded by Mr. Sparks. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Now we go to item six, consideration to approve contract between Columbus Municipal School District and Mississippi State University, or Mississippi State University radio station WMSV 91.1 FM to broadcast Columbus High School basketball games. Board, I need a motion for approval. So moved. Uh, has been motioned by Dr. Shoemaker, seconded by uh, Mr. Sparks. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Uh, now we have item seven, consideration to approve revised postage, uh, postage meter rental agreement between Columbus Municipal School District and Pitney Bowes. Board, I need a motion for approval. So moved. Has been motioned by Dr. Shoemake. I'll make the second. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Now we go to um, Superintendent recommendations uh, B1, consideration to approve staff personnel items. Um, before we get into that, there is one um, that I do have a question about. And I apologize, it logged me out here. If you look at the bottom of page two, um, recommendations for off-contract work. There is um, under C, after-school tutoring at Columbus Middle, and it says October 16 through the 24, 2017. Um, I, you know, I just need a clarification as to why that says October when everything else um, is December and, of course, goes into next year. This is going backwards. If you look on page two of the staff personnel under the section toward the bottom of the page, recommendations for off-contract work, uh, it says C, after school tutoring at middle school, Columbus Middle, October the 16th through the 24th, 2017, one hour a day, four days at $25 an hour. Uh, Deborah Porter, teacher at Columbus Middle, funding district. But everything else is from this point forward and into next year, and this has already, you know, happened. already happened. And so I just didn't know if that was a, just a date. It should be December or if it's wrong or needs to be removed. No, sir, Mr. Spears. This uh, was an original approval that was made um, 
back uh, a couple of months ago for this particular teacher to be paid from Title VI. Uh, some funds that were remaining from a Title VI grant that we had. Her timesheet was submitted uh, after the payroll cutoff date for those funds and those funds have thus been liquidated. So therefore we had to act um, retrospectively and pay her for the time that she worked in October because her time she was submitted after the uh, funds for that particular grant had been liquidated. Okay. Um, I'm just trying, because, all right. So the tutoring was rendered and the individual still has not been paid. That's correct. Okay. Um, Mr. Dunn, I mean, I'm, I mean, I assume she's, she's worked. We don't have, the board doesn't have a choice. I mean, no, I understand that, but I mean, as far as approving it, even though it's retroactive, I mean, I, it's the same thing we just took care of. Yes. Okay. As All long right, so, as she rendered the services, the, okay. the debt is owed. She did it in good faith. So you, you've got to approve payment. Okay. Um, so. So board, we have that. I assume that everybody's okay. She provided the service to the student, and and um, and we're just apparently, from my understanding, is that we're changing the location of where the funds are being taken from to actually pay the, for her time. Okay. So board, I need a. Uh, I a yeah. Well, we gotta have. A, oh, sorry. I just brought that up because that was there before we had a motion on the table. So if everybody, is this a change or something? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I have. Uh, I need a. Motion for approval. So moved. Has been motioned Second. by Dr. Verdell, seconded by Mr. Sparks. Uh, discussion. Yes, Dr. Shoemaker. Just a just a quick question. Um, I I noticed that uh, Robin Buxton is moving to interim assistant principal at Cook, and has anybody been assigned to pick up her professional development or parental involvement coordination activities? Because those are have been important in the past. Just, just wondering. Yes, they have, and with Dr. Hickman's permission, we will bring that information to you in January. But someone is assuming uh, both of those uh, duties for her professional development and parental involvement. Thank you very much. Thank you, board. Is there any other questions uh, regarding uh, the staff personnel item? Uh, being no additional discussion, all in favor of approval, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Next, we go to um, the next item, which is consideration to approve updated 2017-18 supplements for additional duties. Uh, the individuals listed on our staff personnel uh, with respect to uh, picking up additional duties uh, in the sports athletic uh, programs. So, uh, board, I need a motion for approval of the supplement. So moved. It's been motioned by, by Mr. Sparks. I, I'll make the second. Any discussion? Uh, being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. Next, we go to um, item C, goal updates, uh, student attendance report. Um, Mr. Shannon. Yes, sir, uh, President Spears, members of the board, you do see the report before you for November. We do have uh, five of our schools that did reach our district goal of 95%. We have one school, uh, Franklin, uh, that is hovering around 95 at 93, and uh, CHS uh, is at 91. So very happy to report that all of our schools are above 91%, uh, uh, and we are working to reach our goal of 95. Uh, we also have some incentives that our principals have used, and the high school did reach uh, their goal uh, for uh, that period. And I think we have uh, over 200 students, correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Cargile, that will be uh, rewarded for their attendance uh, here in December. So our, our principals are trying to find very creative ways to inspire our, our students to attend school and perform their very best. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shannon. Uh, board, any questions uh, regarding um, the student attendance report? Next, we go to um, C2, which is the dropout report. Mr. Shannon? Again, Mr. Spears, you see that information before you. We did have four students that decided not to continue attending uh, the high school, 
and all of those were for uh, compulsory age requirements uh, to 11th graders and to 10th graders. Board, is there any other questions with respect to uh, the dropout report? Next, we go to the school safety report, uh, student discipline. Uh, we have all the diff the district um, reports here. Uh, Boarders, are any questions uh, regarding the student discipline reports presented to us? No questions. Uh, next, we move to um, item four, which is workers' compensation report, number of accidents in schools, uh, the safety report. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's uploaded to our resources for evaluation that we made a determination of. So, board, that's there. I, I know you've had a chance to look through it. Uh, any questions regarding the safety report? Okay. Um, next, we have the teacher attendance report, item five. Uh, Mr. Shannon, do you have any comments about it? Just one, if you may allow me, uh, for Columbus Success Academy, uh, we do see that they are in the red, but that is due to a teacher being out uh, for an extended medical condition. Uh, so our attendance is pretty good. Uh, this time of the year when all of the uh, sicknesses and illnesses are going on, we usually see a decline, but uh, everyone is in the yellow or the green except for the Success Academy, and that is for a medical condition. Okay. Thank you, Board. Any questions regarding uh, the report, the teacher attendance report? Next, we'll go to item six, seven, and eight uh, because they work together. Uh, we discussed this at our review meeting uh, the other day at sale. Uh, with respect to in January, uh, we are asked to uh, perform a board self evaluation as well as the board attorney evaluation and the superintendent evaluation. Um, all that information, um, I'm going to continue to work with Ms. Uh, Woodard to uh, get it uploaded to uh, resources so that we will have that uh, here in the next uh, few days. And, uh, but we do need, as we talked about uh, at our review meeting, to set a date uh, so that we can get it scheduled uh, for those uh, reviews uh, coming up in January. And the reason that it's paramount that we do it in January is because by January 31st, we have to have um, those reports or those evaluations completed. <clears throat> so, board, in the past, we've um, had the meetings on Saturdays. Um, I know we talked about different days uh, that we have coming up. So, uh, board, what is the pleasure of the board? Is there any dates that kind of stick out that we would like to try to get together on? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, dates, Saturday dates are uh, January the 6th, the 13th, the 20th, um, and the 27th. Do you, do you mention that you would definitely not be available on well, Saturday? Well, on the 27th, but since that meeting, I've been able to make some adjustments okay. in my schedule, so that is available. Is there any date someone would like to offer up um, to meet? Do we want to try the 20th or? 27th. The 27th, okay. So that we have January the 27th. <coughs> Excuse me. The 27th, 27th. All right, so we will um, confirm the 27th. Um, I believe last year we met here uh, at Brandon. In years past, we'd met at an off-site location, but do we want to meet off-site or we will meet here at, at the district? Save money meet here. Okay, so okay. let's just meet here at the district, um, and we'll meet in the leadership room um, down the hallway here. So um, do we want to start, say, 8, 8.30? What's the will of the board? 8.30, that's when we normally start our morning meeting, so 8.30. Um, and I would think that, you know, we go through everything and normally we finish up around noontime, one o'clock, depending on the topic and everything we discuss. So, um, so we'll go ahead and I'll have, uh, if Ms. Uh, Woodard, I guess it's okay, Mr. Dunn, since we as a board have agreed to it, that uh, do we have to post it within an hour or just uh, now that we have a consensus, then I can just ask her tomorrow to actually post it. Yeah, if you, do, you don't want an action right. setting it tonight. Sure. Just You can just take it on yourself okay. and 
in the morning. Okay. All right. So I'll email you in the morning, uh, Ms. Woodard. All right. So uh, just to restate, Saturday, January 2018 on the 27th at 8.30 a.m. here at the district uh, leadership uh, room. Thank you all. Then that brings us to our next item, which is number nine, annual summary of policies. Um, this is for information only, it just, as a, um, just as it states, a summary of all the policies that have been uh, reviewed and acted on throughout this year. Next item we go to is item number nine, which is closed determination for executive session. I need a motion for closed determination. So moved. Has been motioned by Dr. Verdell. Um, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. We'll be out shortly to make our announcement. It's the return in session and adjourn. Yeah. All right. We are back in regular session now. Uh, the board did take up uh, three or four different items. Uh, we did take action on uh, two personnel items. Um, the motions were made, and it was 5 0 vote for both personnel uh, matters. Then we went to our executive session minutes. Uh, motion was made and uh, seconded, and of course, we had a it was a 5-0 vote on the executive session minutes, and then we returned to regular session uh, with a 5-0 vote, and that brings us to our last item on tonight's agenda, uh, which is for adjournment. Um, I need a motion uh, for adjournment. So moved. Has been, been, <laughs> been motioned by Mr. Sparks. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Dr. Shoemake. Second. Um, now let's have some, no. Uh, any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please signify with your right hand. We are adjourned. Thank you.